Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. This is a gimlet bit. It's a broken gimlet bit, so until I get up enough gimlet bits that makes it worthwhile to go through and figure out how to sharpen these things, all I'm going to be doing with these is just sticking them in a pile. This is a Morse tapered drill bit. Just like this Morse tapered drill bit, but it's much smaller. In a different batch of tools, I obtained this adapter so I can use that drill bit with this adapter and use it in the lathe. Not much of a need for it, but it's kind of a cool thing to have. Back in the old days, drill presses didn't have chucks. They quite often had just a Morse taper in them. You put the drill bit into the chuck, which is just a tapered pocket. Then if you needed to remove it, you take a wedge like this, put it in the slot, drive it in, and that would knock the drill bit free of the Morse taper. These are gone out of style over the years, but us old guys, we still got them. We still use them just because we can. Now this thing is kind of an unusual doohickey. This is for pulling packings out of hydraulic cylinders. There's a V-type or chevron packing that is used in a lot of the old equipment that has hydraulic cylinders on it, especially the larger cylinders. After you pull the packing gland, which was always a pain in the neck because they were usually made out of brass and or they had a brass lining in them and they had a series of bolts around it so that it would draw the brass, which was the guide rod or the guide for the rod, you'd pull that out take out all the bolts, pull that out, get it loose. Then you would slide this around and slip it down into the hole and turn it and that corkscrew at the end would go in and hook into the chevron packing which was it was wax impregnated so it was formed into the shape of a V and the V would go into the cylinder with a V open like this so that when the pressure hit against the uh, packing from the hydraulic inside the cylinder, from the oil inside the cylinder, when the pressure hit it, it caused that V packing to open up and tighten onto the shaft and caused it to stop any leaks. They worked. Uh, they wore out quite quickly. So you'd end up changing the packing on those cylinders, oh, maybe once or twice every three or four years. And that doesn't sound like a whole lot of work, but when you've got a machine like a hydraulic extrusion press that has upwards of 10 or 12 cylinders on it, and they're all big enough that they wouldn't fit in the back of a pickup truck. Some of them wouldn't fit in the back of a semi truck. You have to go through and change the packings on those big cylinders. That is a serious amount of work. Anyways, that's what this is. You don't find them very often because the modern cylinders are U-cut packings and they're slid in there and tightened up with a brass bushing and when you want to take them out, you just hook onto them and pull them. A lot nicer. This thing is just a bolt that was in the box. Has no apparent purpose other than I think it was used to hold a wire reel together. That looks like the kind of thing that it is. And this drill bit looks like it's an interesting drill bit, but somebody broke the pilot drill off on it, so it more than likely doesn't drill much. Then they cut off the square tang and used it in a power drill, so I imagine they just used it to stuff a hole through a piece of wood. You put enough horsepower and RPMs on something, it's going to cut a hole through just from plain old wearing. So that's the stuff that I got at the Heritage Company. This will be a separate video. 
was an interesting find and I was quite pleased. If you have any suggestions for a video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.